Hello everybody, this is Hero back with another Dragonflight video and we are taking a look at ranged DPS tier list for Mythic Plus. Now, um, tier lists are hilarious because it brings everybody out of the woods to s try to body slam you for not picking their favorite spec or not picking the spec that they think should be an S tier versus A or B. And... Uh, just want to say to you people at the beginning of this tier list, don't sweat it. This is just a projection. And my goal is to try to see, can I predict what will be the top, top specs performing in Mythic Plus from the range DPS role? The goal is not to say that your spec is garbage or that you can't do damage or that you can't complete content. And we'll get into some of those details in this video, but just to open it up, there are some specs that will become the meta spec for whatever reason. And we can do some work to predict that based on a number of weeks of weekend beta testing and following people who are performing at a high level on these specs and evaluating what they're doing, looking at compositions that are likely to happen based on the dungeons we have. So there's good reasonable guesses that we can make and somebody has to be at the top and there's going to be a meta. That's why we have tier lists. Anyways, I love the comments that you guys send for these sorts of things, so keep them coming. But let's head over to the ranged Mythic Plus tier list. Now, unlike melee and healers, I think the race is a lot tighter for our ranged uh, DPS. And I've put them into three major categories, with our S tier being classes that I think likely are going to, to control the meta from a ranged DPS perspective at some point throughout this um, coming tier. And then A and B are pretty close together, but these are specs that I think are slightly worse. Now, the main takeaway is that demo locks, BM hunters, and to some degree frost and fire mages are gonna be present in the meta if the tuning remains relatively the same. So I'll talk a little bit about the significance of tuning specifically for this list as we go through it. But this is the opening piece, what you can expect to see if nothing changed going forward. I think I just have some mage stuff going on in the background for those who are interested. But uh, let's get into it. So here is some of my reasoning and the work that I've put in to put together this tier list all condensed down into a fairly simple Excel sheet. And I'm going to work through all the specs and talk about a range of issues that are relevant for them. So you can refer back to the tier list as we go. Beginning with Demo Lock. A Demo Lock at the moment is probably the highest tuned damage dealer from a range perspective. And it is currently smashing both Destro and Affliction, and indeed it is performing at a really high level um, right across the board compared to all of the other ranged DPS. Now this is, by and large, especially for all Warlocks, a tuning issue because Warlock does not bring any extra very unique utility to a Mythic Plus dungeon that you couldn't get somewhere else. The only, the only thing you get out of them is like lock rocks and those in terms of their overall impact on the performance at a very high key level is not the same thing as a game defining interaction like a cheat death or some kind of aggro drop like boomkins get with force of nature or having access to a short range kick like shaman do or mind soothe which can change your dungeon route or if you're a rogue you know you can do cloak and get everybody um, to in, with concealment to some new location that you couldn't have access to we did have a little bit of this with gateway stuff in shadowlands i think mists of tirnasai offered some really weird situations there but across the board when i talk about utility from the range dps slot what i'm asking is does this spec provide something that either the other specs cannot provide within their um, class or does it provide something that is like completely unique and we cannot get elsewhere in our comp? What that means is that for demo locks, 
If their damage stays at this level, you are going to take them despite the composition. They're just that good. And we saw this with Survival Hunter and Destruction Warlock in Shadowlands. Their damage was so high for sustained AoE, their cooldowns were always available essentially, that they were taken despite the fact that they might make a comp a little bit worse. And what do I mean by make a comp worse? I mean you don't have access to certain kinds of buffs from say Windwalkers or Monks or NDHs. You don't have access to some uh, you know, really important unique utility like Ring of Peace or if you needed it for some reason um, Death Grips or if you needed it for some reason um, Kidney Shots and major single target control from a rogue. These classes, these range classes, Destro Lock and uh, the main class Survival Hunter from last tier were so powerful that we took them anyways. And that's the situation that Demo Lock finds itself in. Uh, you know, Demo Lock is all, also very sturdy in general um, due to the way Soul Link works. And pet damage is not quite passive, but it's also um, the rotation is pretty smooth, and a lot of the damage can happen if you're in the middle of a mechanic, especially on single targets. So Tyrannical, I expect to see a lot of demo locks who can ramp their damage up as you add um, demons to your pile and get giant tyrants, that kind of stuff. It's also fun to play. You can check out Tele Telegon WL. I'm not really sure. I guess that's just Telegon, his warlock. He's done some keys. I think there's an 18 currently that you can check out. I'll put a link below for the Warcraft logs that gives you access to some of the uh, testing being done on beta so you can peruse for yourself and see where I'm getting some of this uh, data from. Uh, Frostmage, also really, really strong currently on the beta. And I, I guess Frost and Fire are in a weird position because they are two sides of the same coin. One of them, Frost Mage, is sustained AoE and will always have cooldowns ready because you can just fire orbs and blizzards and go to town on giant AoE. Whereas Fire Mage is more of a CD oriented uh, damage dealer and historically has been part of comps that want to do big pulls around CDs. This was kind of true of, true of Destro Lock as well. But for Fire Mage, uh, you, you can then up the value of things like PI, for example, because if you want a fire mage because you're going to do pulls around their combustion, you also want to have some of those other tools to complement it. But frost mage doesn't need any of that. It's just going to be solid right through. You can see here in the background, just on something like four or five dummies, you're getting um, pretty awesome sustained damage. Uh, and it's a very simple rotation. It does provide a unique utility. I, I kind of put it up into this bracket. There are other classes that can slow things regularly with the rotation and chill things and freeze things. Um, but Frost Mage does it so naturally and it does it uh, all of the time through a dungeon that you can rely on that as a utility if you want it. Meaning if we have to do some kind of crazy kiting, Frost Mage is one of the best uh, classes to, to do that. You op It offers you the opportunity to lay just layer blizzards and frozen orbs along the path and you can pull into new things if that's what you want. Um, not that actually sustained slows and freezes are particularly valuable necessarily. I'm just saying this probably constitutes what I mean by a unique range DPS utility option. You can check out some of Simple's work. There are other frost mages as well, but they're doing some pretty high keys. Um, BM. So, Beast Mastery Hunter is like Demo Lock and like Survival and Destro of Old, one of the classes that you would take despite the comp, meaning they're not really offering a buff or some kind of uh, mandatory piece that you have to take. Their damage is just slapping. And this is very true right now of BM Hunter. They are tuned to do a ton of damage. Just checking all the logs that I did, uh, Shuang Jing, is one of the logs that I looked at. I think it was a plus 18 that this BM Hunter was doing and just a crap load of damage across the uh, board. And obviously beast damage, uh, beast cleave, um, really, really good stuff. So the one utility piece that a BM Hunter is gonna bring that nobody else brings, including MM, is you get a caster, a non-caster lust. What I mean by that is you're not taking a mage 
you're not taking preservation or destruction evoker, you can still have access to lust uh, within your group. So that's kind of useful. Say you had a comp like Prot Warrior, uh, Resto Druid, and then Monk and Rogue, you could take a BM Hunter as your last one and still benefit from the um, you know attack power bonus that you get out of Warrior and you get lust from the, the BM Hunter. So uh, these are things when I think about overall comps that you might see, um, there's a little advantage there on the utility side for, for BM specifically. But their AoE and single targets awesome. You could check out some of those logs there. Um, yeah. Fire Mage also, just like I was saying with Frost, the main thing is, is it is good for a comp because you get Arcane Intellect, you get uh, a Lust, and the one unique piece of utility that Fire has, especially over Frost <clears throat> and over Arcane, is access to a Cheat Death uh, in Cauterize. Now, Frost does get double Ice Block because you can get back your Ice Block, but Fire Mage with Cauterize gives you a secondary layer so you can cheat entire mechanics with uh, a Fire Mage and you could have a comp set up to do some kind of cheating on a really giant tyrannical boss or something that has a one an AoE that just one shots everybody. You can play things like Holy Paladin, Rogue, Fire Mage and just cheat death and cauterize through some of those mechanics. It's these kinds of things that give them a tiny edge. Also the kind of playing around a CD class is really strong for Fire Mages uh, in particular because Combust is such a valuable uh, button. Currently, there's a lot more testing that shows the kind of single target uh, funnel damage, so Pyroblast casting that then gets spread through Ignite. Um, rather than doing Living Bomb, Flame Strike stuff, I've, I haven't really found anyone trying to do Living Bomb and Flame Strike at high keys. Um, but if you want some information, go look up uh, Han Feng Mage. He's done a lot of the pyroblast oriented style where you're still uh, trying to reset combustion as much as you possibly can, but you're spreading it with Phoenix Flames uh, and, or specifically with Fire Blast. Anyways, Fire Mage is almost always going to be on the list, partly because of these, these awesome mechanics, the cheat death and combustion giving you a CD oriented spec. Boomkin. Boomkin's doing a ton of damage right now as well. You can check out some of the stuff Tettles is doing, especially big on AoE. Their single target has come down a little bit, which is why I think it deserves to be in A. Uh, the other problem is, in terms of comp, you have to ask yourself, is Feral Druid bad? And if the answer is no, then you are losing a lot of the utility side that you would get out of having a druid in the comp. The same is true for Resto Druid. If Resto Druid is awesome, you don't need your Mark of the Wild then from the Boomkin, and you get all of your pushing and pull stuff from the class side. They do provide a very unique set of utility only available to Boomkin, which is Force of Nature. That's the Treants that go out and will taunt. So if you need that kind of interaction on a really heavily fortified um, set, I think of like Theater of Pain perhaps, where maybe the mobs were just too tough and you needed the pressure release for a few seconds. Something like Force of Nature is interesting. Or Beam, and Beam is also kind of unique. An AoE, sustained AoE silence that you can freeze things in. You get a little bit of that from Sigils in Demon Hunters, but it's not quite the same as what Beam is, although Beam is a one minute cooldown. Anyways, the nice part about Boomkins is their AoE is exceptionally strong. You can layer your Starfalls, and again, check out Tettles for some of that. Um, information. Next we have our evoker. So the main question for evoker is do we have a preservation evoker which is currently one of the highest tuned damage wise uh, throughput healers in Mythic Plus and you can you know check out all the content for people producing preservation evoker um, damage but the question is if that comes down, is there an opening? Maybe. I don't think there's anything particularly satisfying that uh, our DPS evoker brings to the comp. Uh, you get lost, and you have a lot of great DR on this class, so Obsidian Scales having two charges is excellent, and it means that it's going to be pretty tanky, but it doesn't really um, rise to the level of 
uh, Frost Mage, Fire Mage, and their immunities, it doesn't quite rise to the level of the damage of Demo Lock. Um, but we'll see. It's early, and we've only done a couple of weeks of testing. They do do a lot of damage, but is there that extra layer that makes them a comp valuable class? Because you, you want, if you can, if you only have five people, you want to get as many buffs and synergies together as you as you possibly can. So that's one detraction uh, in terms of its comp. You can check out some of Bad Rat's footage on the logs to see good examples of high key pushing. Uh, Destro Lock, really big AOE CD, still wrapping around um, the kind of reconfigured four piece from Shadowlands, which is that purple uh, demon that comes flying out. Uh, when, we, when we cast Infernal down, you get Blasphemies. So currently the AoE is great, uh, and single target is not bad. You still get good Chaos Bolt damage, uh, but you kind of have to make some selections between the two. Um, they don't quite have the same cycle of damage with Reign of Fire spam um, producing enough generation because you're getting Infernals dropping in all the time to sustain AoE across packs and really reduce things. Though, if you check out, um, I think it's Nick Boltz, he has a couple of good examples of basically almost completing the cycle where you can can cool down your Infernal, or he's trying to replicate it. And the damage was fine. There's nothing wrong with uh, Destro's damage. It's just, is it gonna be better than Demo's damage? Both Destro and Demo have to fight for this spot because they aren't, uh, range DPS that really bring a special bonus and they don't have immunities. They are tanky, but uh, that's always gonna be the question. They kind of have to break through the comp barrier rather than representing a class that can be brought to uh, shore up the comp. Uh, but for Destro lovers, you'll still get that same iconic AOE damage. Uh, RK Mage, um, pretty strong. It competes largely with Fire Mage in that it is a CD oriented spec and i'll just you know, i'll put the arcane mage footage on the i think i have some arcane footage here in the background um what, what that means is that you are trying to funnel your damage into specific windows with touch of the magi with uh, your kyrian stuff stacking up harmony charges if you're doing big barrages and it's pretty smooth like if you played this in shadowlands you'd have a pretty good rotation of building up with missiles, just casting and running around with doing missiles, and then having huge burst moments. And that's still essentially the same. And in some ways it's better, so it's, it can be very strong. However, that's a CD oriented style. It's like every 30 seconds or 45 seconds you're uh, pressing your buttons. Is that gonna be better than PI with combustion for huge pulls? Um, maybe. It's, you have to load up more CDs and have a more specific or rigid order, um, whereas Fire Mage has the opportunity to do, to move around um, in the middle of its combo. You'll have a couple accesses to uh, Presence of Mind, though I think they nerfed it from three charges of instant cast ABs down to two. So some of it is is in flux. If you're you love arcane you know that it just completely claps when you have line everything up and it'll be a great spec but can it jump past the comp specific elements that make fire mage so good um i don't think so i think it's still in an a tier but you can hear in the in my voice why i think we don't have an s tier all the way down to an f tier we really have a much closer range of specs uh, across the board so the nice thing about Arcane is you can you can play the single target Harmony version and it will splash good AoE with your talent choices. So um, there is an AoE version too that, that doesn't use Harmony, um, which I think I'm showing you here in the background, but it doesn't really scale nicely into single target. Whereas the, the Touch of the Magi, Arcane Surge with Kyrian stuff having stacked up uh, is pretty consistent no matter which style you're doing. You'll get good burst out of single target and AoE. Um, uh, Tsixi, I think I'm pronouncing that right, um, has some good examples on Warcraft logs of arcane damage. So go and check that out. Um, yeah, on to B tier. So um, Beast Mastery, 
Hunter or MMM Hunter? Which one? These two are basically in the same boat. Either one is better tuned and should be brought or the other. And again, the the lust thing for BM is really only a minor utility bump. It is unique, you don't get it for MM, but if MM's damage gets tuned up, maybe it could also jump up. From all the logs that I looked at, it seemed like uh, MM was undertuned. It doesn't mean it can't do good damage. It just wasn't producing the same numbers as BM. So this is a class that I think doesn't really have a comp benefit and has a lower tune damage profile at the moment. So that's why it's in the B tier. And if uh, Beast Mastery was bad, it would also be down here in the B tier because right now it is overcoming this comp barrier that I've been talking about. You can check uh, Azur Therian's work on MM Hunter in some of the logs. I think his is the best representation of, this, of the burst damage that it can do. And I just want to make a comment as we move through to the rest of these. You'll notice that in combing through all of the logs that we have so far in the last number of weeks, every single one of these ranged DPS classes completed at least a plus 15. So plus 20 is going to be probably the ceiling for season one when the gates open. I would be very shocked if anybody completed a plus 20 in the first couple of weeks because it is really hard, right? And uh, Blizz is trying to bring down that number and tune it down. So don't be alarmed by the number plus 15. Like, ah, 15s, I do 15s easily. Well, not in Dragonflight. So there were no logs, I, as far as I can tell, there are no logs above a plus 18 completed by anybody, at least as of the making of this video. That doesn't mean people couldn't have done it and just not reported it. I just mean for the average person looking at this stuff, uh, what has been recorded does not include a plus 19 yet. So this is in season one gear with all of our tier sets with big trinkets, blah, 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 blah. So it's really hard. But every spec has completed a plus 15, which is a good sign. So for those of you who are freaking out about where I've or ordered your range DPS, it's not about whether you can pump damage or whether you fit into a comp. I'm talking about what are desirable classes to build a pushing comp that's going to be able to achieve the best stuff? Okay, Ellie Shaman, big AoE CDs, their single target suffers a little bit. Um, one thing I, li I liked about Ellie Shaman is uh, Magma Totem has come back into the game as a really cool button. Like, it does a crap load of damage. I think there was a couple ones that Tinfoon did that were where it's like 15% of its overall damage was uh, that Magma Totem. Um, which is pretty cool. I don't. It's not called magma totem. It's called uh, liquid. Oh yeah, liquid magma totem. Anyways, um, there is one really good part about being an Ellie shaman. If you're thinking about completely unique utility, they have a short ranged kick. This is true, obviously, of enhancement as well. But it's unusual for our ranged DPS to offer a short kick, and elemental shaman gets that, which is pretty lovely. Obviously, Resto does as well, and so the question is going to be for comp, whether Mage is good, since we get lost out of these classes, and whether Resto Shaman is bad, because if you get all the utility from your Resto Shaman, your Cap Totems, your um, pushing and pulling, some of your, maybe if you need Earth Elemental for some reason, you could get that from your Resto Shaman. Uh, but if you have no Shaman, Maybe you want an Ellie Shaman for its utility, which is a pretty broad kit. And there's a few pieces like Poison Cleansing Totem and maybe the physical DR of uh, Stone Skin uh, or whatever that, that one is called now. That might be kind of valuable. You do get access to AG as well, that meaning that Elemental can convert its damage into uh, healing throughput. But that's also present for some other classes like uh, Shadow Priest. So it's not strictly speaking, a unique utility. Um, that doesn't mean Ellie has none. It just means if Mage is good or Resto Shaman is good, the likelihood that Elemental Shaman gets brought for a comp goes down. So check out Tinfoon and if you're interested in more details about specific builds or their performance. Uh, Athlock. Okay, so Affliction uh, seems to be a bit undertuned. And it seems to have to decide a little bit between AoE or single target in its approach. 
which can be a boon, meaning like on a tyrannical fight, maybe there's a premier single target build for AF that's going to surpass demo, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me given history and some of the testing I've seen. In other words, demo seems to ramp up if you're in single target and you're playing for it, whereas AF, um, maybe not so much. You also have the, the problem of drain soul in a single target environment for AF, which is just an awkward button to press, even though they've buffed it substantially. Maybe Nightfall is okay for Shadow Bolt. I kind of doubt it, just based on the testing. Now, uh, you do get giant AoE, and as the keys go up, AF's value goes up, because huge AoE with dots means you can do a lot of spread cleave and a lot of rot damage. Um, you know, you have access to Seed of Corruption. You've got Vile Taint, right? Which is now putting agonies out. So it can be a ton of damage, guys. But the question is always going to be, uh, is the tuning as good as Demo or Destro? Um, and currently it's not. It's not there. Uh, you can check out Morbalan, who has a couple of good Affliction Warlock logs. But even these, you can see relative to the other players, was kind of lacking. Uh, but I think it's probably a good fortified week spec to think about uh, sustained AoE. I don't know, we'll just see. I really hope App gets tuned up. Same for Shadow Priest. So Shadow Priest is a little bit undertuned uh, and a little bit clunky. It does provide two really important utility pieces from a range DPS perspective. Um, MC or Mind Control, which can like a, you know, remember when DKs used to take over mobs, you can do similar things with Shadow Priest. Sometimes that's the difference between a pull going well or not, you know, planning around that. And, and also Mind Soothe, which gives you a way to get around certain kinds of mobs. Now, you, you do get access to this with Rogue, uh, but that's a melee DPS. So I'm talking just if you're comparing range DPS, what does Shadow offer? And those are two somewhat useful Mythic Plus pieces that we've seen strategized around. Um... You do get PI. Now, um, this is actually what makes Shadow Priest maybe better than B tier, but you have to think, like, if you're building a comp, okay, I don't have a Priest, so I get stamina from Shadow Priest, that's great. We can PI and think about PI in the Mage, so we have some cooldowns, uh, synergy with Fire Mage, looking good, or, or Demo Lock if you want on a Tyrannical, the Shadow Priest is looking good. How's the tuning? Um, how's the gameplay? And presently, it's a little undertuned. And you can check out Twix on this. He has, I think, I think he completed an 18 on Shadow Priest. We're like, hey, come on, here. If he did an 18, obviously Shadow Priest is good. But if you look at some of these logs, um, Shadow Priest's damage is basically garbage. Like it got not carried, but kind of almost carried. So um, it's a little bit unfortunate in that regard. I hope they tune Shadow Priest, and people have been reporting that they really don't like the Mythic Plus uh, gameplay, the feeling is awkward. Uh, maybe that's a secondary stat thing, if you have more haste you'll feel like it's smoother or better. Um, but nevertheless, that's just more the reporting for those of you who are thinking about Shadow Priest. I think the damage is just not quite there at the moment from a Mythic Plus perspective. Maybe I'm wrong, just looking through all the logs, this is the stuff I found. The main takeaway, guys, is that everybody did a plus 15, and you can build a comp around a number of these pieces. If you were trying to come up with the absolute best comp to build, and you wanted a range DPS, or are there range DPS that we should include, this is your tier list. You want a Demo Lock, you want a Frost Mage, you want a BM Hunter. And if you're doing CD-oriented stuff, maybe swap out the Frost Mage for a fire mage. I don't know, something like that. In any case, guys, that concludes the video for today. Please let me know what you think in the comments. I'm happy to talk about how I got this data. As I said, I'll link the Warcraft logs info so you can go and look it up yourself. For those of you who are testing and playing these things on the beta, you can give me your own experience. But this is my prediction for the highest pushing tiers in Season 1 of Dragonflight for range DPS. Take it the grain of salt. We'll see you guys next time.